first peter chapter 4 in verse 1 Peter says, so, since Christ suffered in the flesh for us, for you arm yourselves with the same thought and purpose, patiently to suffer rather than fail to please God. For whosoever has suffered in the flesh, having the mind of Christ is done with uh, intentional sin, has stopped pleasing himself and the world and pleases God. So this evening, uh, we are going to look into what uh, Peter uh, talks in this chapter 4 in the scripture. And that is the suffering like Jesus. Okay, that means uh, we need to understand that God did not remain in heaven. God came and robed himself in flesh and walked among us. So God show us or oh, in Jesus Christ stewardship, genuine in love, and glorifying the Heavenly Father in his daily choices. Jesus said, What? I've come not to please myself, not to please anybody, but to please his heavenly father. So today we are going to look into the word to see what we can learn. Suffering in this life. Now we all know after the fall of Adam, suffering is the consequence of sin coming into the world. That means no one is exempted from suffering. Okay, Jesus suffered, the Bible says. So, the truth is that we are all going to suffer in this world. Why? Because of sins. So, sin will bring some suffering into your life, whether you like it or not. For some people, it can be mental, physical, emotional, like you've lost a job. You suffer because without a job, you know, you, you, you it's going to affect your living. You have to pay your bills. So there are different types of suffering. So whether we know it or not, we are all currently suffering from sin. Because of sin that uh, some of us is hell. Sickness in our life, pain, and all the negative things that have come into the world. We cannot avoid this, understand that. Some people say, no, I don't want. It's not you want or you don't want. It is because of sin, suffering has come into the world. However, the model of Jesus Christ, okay, Throughout the Bible, his suffering okay, show us how we can live and have a right mindset and attitude when we suffer. And that's why Peter uh, mentioned all right, concerning the suffering of Jesus. So there is a difference. There is a difference between wrestling with a hard time and Despairing in it. That means you don't get drowned in your suffering. You need to understand that today you are a child of God. You're a Christian. God wants you to overcome in your mindset concerning suffering. The Jew and I, we might go through. All right. So the believer security. I've always said the believer security that Jesus gives you and me is the gift of eternal hope and eternal life when he gave us his Holy Spirit. The resurrection, the hope, all right, that you can live 
overcome sin in your life. That means don't allow when you are going through because of sin or what sin has caused the suffering in your life that you you despair, you, you drown in it. That's not the will of God. So we have to put on the mindset that we overcome that. All right? We are not defeated. So uh, Peter said, oh, Christ suffer in the flesh. Arm yourself. The same way of thinking. See, we, we got to arm ourselves. We have to put on Okay, the mindset. The Bible says, For whosoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So we are to overcome sin. We don't allow all right, sin to overcome us or cause us to become discouraged. Continue to sin against God. We put a stop to it. All right? The Bible say, as to leave the rest of the time in the flesh no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. So today, you and I, we got to put on this understanding, a mindset, that we are to live to the will of God. That means don't continue in your suffering or don't allow suffering to continue to drag you down. You need to overcome it. All right? So we are invited to arm ourselves with the same way of thinking as Jesus Christ. Let this mind be you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Peter said that. Okay? And Paul said in Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. You see, the enemy, the devil, constantly want come to make this sin issue a trouble or a suffering upon you. See, a lot of people, they get discouraged, they live for God, and in their suffering, they give up on God. And the devil have achieved that. Okay, so between Peter and Paul, we got to arm ourselves, not in our own strength, but the Bible says by the power of God's Spirit. That's why God gave you, Jesus gave you the Comforter, His Holy Spirit, that whenever you need to overcome the suffering in your life, you pray, you ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you, just like when Jesus prayed, the Holy Spirit strengthen him. So there is such a thing as you can be strengthened by the power of God when you are suffering. Don't keep quiet. That means don't continue to suffer in whatever that come upon you in your life. You can overcome it by asking the Spirit of God for strength. So when you think about a current area of suffering in your life, because all of us, we do have suffering. Some people suffer from health issues. Some people suffer from relation issue, relationship issue. Some people uh, maybe uh, anxiety. Some people, you know, uh, emotion. So, what comes to your mind when you are suffering is that you feel, well, maybe nobody cares, it's insignificant, and it is a very difficult challenge I have to face. And this is where Peter say, arm yourself. And Paul say what? Put on the whole armor of God. That means when you are suffering, you need to go to God. That's the number one thing. You and I, if we are to receive strength to overcome when we are suffering, is to go to God. Because Jesus invites those who are heavy burdened. That means those people who have been pressed down. 
in life issue, they need to approach God. And the Bible says God will give you grace. The Spirit of God will strengthen you. And you got to ask. If you don't ask, you won't get. A lot of people just keep quiet. A lot of, a lot of people just you know, ignore it or they think it will go away. So when you are suffering in your life, going through, you need to go to God. Don't go to your own self, your strength, your flesh. Don't even go to the world. You got to go to God. This is a very powerful thing that Christian always missed out. They don't go to God. And when you go to God, you've got to have faith to believe that he hears you. You know, every time the children of Israel, when they cried out in their suffering, the enemy attacked them. They don't have water and, and the heat. And they were beaten by snake. Who did they go to? They always go to God. And every time when they cry out to God, God heard their cry. And God was sent his grace through a prophet, through someone. So the same thing. Then you learn to go to Jesus in your suffering. God will hear you. Okay, many of us, we can testify, we can say, well, uh, when I go to God in prayer, when I cry out to God, when I ask God to give me grace, truly, he will answer what your needs is. Many a time I learned that in the early years of my ministry. I've learned when I'm financially broke, when I'm in big trouble, <laughs> you know, with, with certain issue, I always go to God. And I've learned that God hears my prayer. And as a Christian, you've got to realize that God will hear your prayer. I know it's good we pour out to a brother, to a sister, to someone, because we want to seek uh, consolation, some advice, someone to listen. And that's good. The Bible says that's the body of Christ you, you go to. But remember, you must never leave Jesus out of your life. Number one person you need to go is God. Go to Jesus. Okay? And Jesus, uh, your current area of suffering. All right? And uh, Peter also say in verse 8, above all, keep loving one another earnestly for love covers a multitude of sins. So what is Peter here trying to say? Peter is trying to encourage, you know, uh, the strength that you get from your brother and sister when you're suffering, it will cover the multitude of sins. That means it will strengthen you, you know, many people say, well, uh, I cannot see God. Jesus is not here. Okay? Or God touched me. But there is also what we call the body ministry. You go to a brother or a sister, you confide to them the suffering. Maybe they will just listen. You know, you don't have to go to a psychiatrist. You don't have to go and see a doctor. Though, of course, if you are sick, you have to go. But a lot of time, we want someone to hear us out. Okay, and this is where the love part comes in. You give a year to your brother, or your sister, and listen. You don't even have to say anything. That is what we call the body ministry. Okay. There are also... Uh, several possible reasons for Christian suffering that are distinct from the reasons for the general suffering experience 
by people, even not Christian. Okay? So there are several possible reasons. In Psalms 30 verse 5, let's look at Psalms 30 verse 5. I will read from the Amplified Version. Psalms chapter 30 in verse 5. For his anger is but for a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime or in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the, in the morning. And in 2 Corinthians 4, 17, it was, this, was, uh, this scripture was repeated. Okay, That means weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. There is no amount of suffering that can go on forever. Just like the rain, just like the sunshine, just like anything in life is for a season. So here are several reasons for you and I, we got to learn and find out from God. Because some people would like to ask, you know, besides sin, because the cause, the causes come from sin. They say, Pastor, why am I suffering? Why God make me go through this type of suffering? Yeah, I got a question like that thrown at me, okay? Through 40 years of pastoring, they say, uh, Pastor, can you tell me, why do God make me suffer like this? I don't have the answer. But looking from the word of God, we have the answer. So here is this. Uh, several reasons. Number one, suffering may be a form of discipline. Okay, discipline. Because God is a good father, so when one of his children go astray, he may use suffering to bring him or her back. Hebrews chapter 12. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. And I will read in verse 5 to verse 11. And have you completely forgotten the divine word of appeal and encouragement in which you are reasoned with and addressed as son? My son, do not think Likely or scorn to submit to the correction and the discipline of the Lord, nor lose courage and give up and faint when you are reproved or corrected by Him. For the Lord corrects and disciplines everyone whom He loves, and He punishes, even scourges, every son whom He accepts and welcomes to His heart and cherishes. Okay. You must submit to and endure correction for discipline. God is dealing with you as with sons. For what son is there whom his father does not train and correct and discipline? Now, if you are exempt from correction and left without discipline in which all of God's children share, then you are illegitimate offspring and not true sons at all. <clears throat> Moreover, we have our early fathers who disciplined us and we yielded to them and respected them for training us. Shall we not much more cheerfully submit to the Father of Spirit and so truly live? For our early father disciplined us for a short period of time, chastised us as seemed proper and good to them but he disciplined us for a certain good that we may become sharer in his own holiness. For the time being, no discipline brings joy, but seems grievous and painful. But afterward, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it, a harvest of fruit which consists in righteousness, conformity to God's will in purpose, thought, action, 
resulting in right living and right standing with God. So here we can see the discipline. So God brings this suffering as a form to a wake-up call. Okay, that means God is treating you as his children. And this is where, with the discipline, we will live right. Okay, adhering to God's uh, guideline. Then number two, suffering enable Christian to identify with and encourage other sufferers. The Bible says Jesus Christ come as a son. He showed you and I an example. So in his suffering, he did not complain. He accepted it, the will of God. Okay. In fact, he who know no sin, take all the sins of the world upon himself. That means he really suffered. Okay. Second Corinthians. 1, verse 3 and 4 tells us this. Paul said, Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. See? So, when you go through suffering, you are able to identify with those who are also suffering, and you can encourage them because you have experienced it. You, you, go, you go through it. All right? So those who have experienced the grace of God in their trouble are better equipped to help others. Okay? To find, Paul say what? Grace in time of their trouble. So people needed that. People needed help. Who they will go to? They come to you. They come to me. They ask. I'm suffering. How, how, how to come out of it? And this is where you and I, we can encourage them. Because we can give them our testimony. We can share with them our experience. Okay? And uh, when people share their, their experience or their testimony, it's very powerful. It encourages those who are new in the Lord and who are going through suffering that there is comfort. Okay? There is comfort. Okay, number three, suffering also helps to draw us to God. That means God wants our attention. Okay? Some people may be in suffering. Okay? Uh, I remember a man share his story. He's a very adventurous man and he's got no time for God. He, he travel, you know, have adventure and all. Until one day, he was struck down. No more traveling, no more running here, running there. And this is where God got his attention. Okay? So when he's paralyzed, this is where he starts seeking God. Start. Knowing more about God. I mean, you might seem, oh, this is not really good. Well, the suffering that he's going through helps him to draw close to God. That's why Jesus said what? It's better to enter into heaven without your eyes, without your hand, without your legs. Because God wants to draw attention. God wants to get your attention. Some people, they got no time for God. But then when they are suffering, then God gets their attention. All right? So life cannot be too busy that we don't have time for God. And this is people in the world. But to you and I, we are Christian. We are children of God. Okay? Of course, today in the world, it is so sad. We can see Children don't have time for their parents. And that's not right. Something is not right here. Yeah, we can see. 
and and it's sad. The same thing. We are God's creation. God wants our attention. Okay, God wants our attention. So, God will uh, allow the suffering to come, just like the children of Israel, and then they will start calling on God. And then also suffering, we must always remember, I've said, we live in a world that is fallen into sin. And that's why there is nothing good in the world. But people are still going out into the world and looking for it. It's a fallen world. Okay? And say in Hebrews chapter 11, the people knew it. They were seeking for a home, not of this world, but a home that God has prepared for them. They were just passing through. They were pilgrims. The same thing, Christian who live uh, in the world, they find it uh, that they are pilgrims passing through. Okay? They have a better home. And the home is in eternity. And that's why in Hebrews chapter 11, we read how Christian in the first century right down to even today, they go through suffering, okay? Persecution, poverty, uh, uh, torture, in prison, uh, all kinds, okay? Even today in the world, Christians are still suffering. Okay, and this is where uh, God say, be of good cheer. We are not uh, putting our hope in this world. Our hope is in the soon coming king and his kingdom. Okay, uh, some teach us that we got to have enough faith and then we don't have to suffer. Don't believe that kind of doctrine. <laughs> okay? It's false doctrine. Oh, if you become a Christian, you won't suffer. I'm sorry to tell you that is false. Okay? Please do not give that kind of teaching of false hope to people. Okay? If you want to see them come to Jesus, don't tell them, oh, you come to Jesus, you won't suffer. That is wrong. All right? No such thing. And uh, we read in Matthew chapter 14, John the Baptist was beheaded. Can you believe that? John the Baptist, because he was living for God and preaching, okay, the kingdom of God, repentance, okay, preaching on the coming Messiah. He was beheaded, okay, and then all of Jesus disciples they, they 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 lose their life until the final one john the beloved he was uh, exiled to an island to live there to die okay he was able to give us the book of revelation of what the future that god is going to do so we can see the people were longing for a better country in Hebrews chapter 11. And that's why it ended up saying, therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Okay? God knows you will suffer for his name's sake. And God knows because your faith is in him, suffering is going to come. But in your suffering, we must keep our faith steadfast by going to Him, seeking Him for grace to stand, especially in the evil days. And then also, the Bible tells us, even Moses who choose not to live in Egypt and enjoy the good life. 
And rather, he chose to suffer with the people of God. Moses chose to suffer. Okay? He could have chose not to and continue, but we know Moses wanted to do the will of God. All right? So our ultimate hope is not in this world, not gaining earthly comfort. Our hope is in God. Hebrews chapter 11 tells us that in verse 39 and 40. And uh, faithful to know that suffering is for a season. You will not go through suffering without end. All right? It's for a season. And so the same hope uh, exemplified by the people mentioned in Hebrews 11 is ours too when we suffer for doing right. First Peter chapter 3, verse 14. Let me read First Peter chapter 3, verse 14. This is what it says. But even in case you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed, happy to be envied. Do not dread or be afraid of their threats, nor be disturbed by their opposition. So what Peter is uh, encouraging the saints during his time, all right, because the Christian in his time uh, they suffer for choosing Jesus Christ. And so Peter say they are blessed. And don't be afraid of the threat or be disturbed in their suffering. So Peter is encouraging the saints then that God's promises to us, even our most heartbreaking pain, Okay, for the good if we will trust him with it. And Paul said, everyone is not exempted from suffering. Let's look at Romans chapter 8. This is one of my favorite scripture in verse 28 to 30. Again, Paul has to encourage uh, the Christian who were going through suffering. So in verse 28, we are assured and know that God, being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitted into a plan for good to those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. So Peter, uh, Paul, give the assurance that God, in His plan, work all things together for good to those who love God and are called according to His purpose. So today, you and I, we have been called, okay, and it is God's plan. Okay, we have the assurance that it will work for good. We should not panic. You know, the disciples of Jesus, they panic. After following Jesus for three and a half years, they panic. When he was taken away. All right. So we should not. Uh, some people in their suffering, they gave up. They cannot continue anymore. And this is where we have to encourage them. All right. And then in verse 29, say, For those whom he foreknew, he's aware and loved beforehand. He also destined from the beginning, before ordaining them, to be molded into the image of his son, that he might become the firstborn among many brethren. Again, here it tells us Jesus in his suffering. 
And because of his example, he's bringing many more. And that is you and me when we suffer in our faith, living for God, we are molded into his plan. Verse 30 says, For those whom he thirsts for ordain, he also call. To those whom he call, he also justify, make righteous, putting them into right standing with himself. And to those whom he justified, he also glorified, raised them to a heavenly dignity and condition or state of being. So Paul, who suffered more than anyone, okay, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, again, he gave the encouraging word. In 2 Corinthians, Chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. For our light momentary affliction, this slight distress of the passing hour, is ever more and more abundantly preparing, producing, achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory beyond all measure excessively surpassing all comparisons and all calculations of vast and transcendent glory and blessedness never to cease. Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen, for the things that are visible are temporal, brief, and fleeting, but the things that are invisible, are dateless and everlasting. This is where the knowledge that you and I can gain when we suffer as Christian or living as a Christian for God's will, we need to realize that not only it disciplines us, but it's now mentioned that preparing and producing for us okay, everlasting way of glory. So the next time, or even right this present moment, some of us, we are going through some hardship in our suffering. You know, our, our faith is affected. So what do you do? You need to go to Jesus. And after that, you need to seek out a brother or sister, the body of Christ, to receive encouragement, the strength. A lot of Christians fail. They keep quiet. They don't go to God. They don't go to one another. They just drown in their suffering. And that is not the will of God. That, my friend, is what the devil wanted. Remember, Jesus said what the devil wants to come? not only destroy you, but through discouragement. And today, Christian, it's not easy. In the apostles' time, in the first century, they go through real physical attack. But today, Christian is the stress, the world that we live in, the rat race, the issues. And this is where many lose heart. Not only they, they want to come to church, they give up on their faith in Jesus Christ. The devil, that's why the Bible said the devil would want everyone to go to hell. Because eternity is greater than this world, temporal. And the devil is trying every means to send suffering into Christians' life, attacking them, whether through hell, whether through their daily living, whether through all kinds of pressure. So they will give up on their faith. They will not go to God. And the devil has won. So let us pray. And let us be reminded that 
when we come to know we have a brother or sister, whatever suffering they're going through, you know, we need to encourage them. We need to do the work of the ministry and help them, okay, so that they will be set free. They will be encouraged. And you don't have to say much. Please uh, don't go and say the wrong thing, all right? Some of us say, ah, you deserve it, la. you're lazy. and don't, don't do that. If you do that, you're killing your brother and your sister. Don't do that. Sometimes it is not their fault. Sometimes they don't know. All right? Or it is a discipline from God. But we need to pray with them. Tell them joy will come in the morning and that they can leave having their faith strengthened intact in the Lord. Because the Bible says what? We need to do that because the days are evil. All right? We can see there are signs today in the world. Nothing is going to be easy. Okay? So let us pray. Let us pray for one another this evening and uh, uh, that they need to have a right mindset. Uh, even if they are Christian for so many years, suffering is because sin is in the world. It's part of it. But we live with the right mindset like Jesus Christ and not be afraid that God is there to help you when you're suffering. Mm -hmm.